I am beyond grateful to have witnessed this fundamental shift in how the financial layer of the internet is changing and evolving. The work is nowhere near done, but if the conversations over the last two days have proven anything, it's that although we have come a very long way, we are all just getting started. I've said this before, but it is truly, and I say this somewhat humorously, an amazing time to be alive. We are witnessing the rewiring of financial infrastructure. We're witnessing enabling things that were simply not possible before. It truly is, I believe, the economic opportunity of a lifetime to enable and catalyze this rewiring. Most people see XRP and think, just another coin to trade. Buy low, sell high, ETF ticker, retail casino. They are wrong. Welcome to Insider Tech. Today we prove with pure mathematics why XRP at $10,000, $50,000 or higher is not hype. It is the logical, inevitable outcome of its actual design as the global liquidity bridge for trillions of dollars per day. This is not speculation, this is engineering. This is also not financial advice, but rather informative. Now let's run the numbers. Phase one, fractionalization, the killer feature nobody talks about. One XRP equals one million drops. At $10,000 per XRP, one drop equals one cent. At $50,000 per XRP, one drop equals five cents. A cup of coffee costs 300 drops, three thousandths of one XRP. A $1 billion institutional settlement costs exactly 100 XRP at $10,000 each. Compare that to Bitcoin at $1 million per coin, you'd need 1,000 BTC to move $1 billion. Massive slippage, massive volatility, massive risk. XRP scales with price, Bitcoin breaks with price. The higher XRP goes, the smoother and cheaper the system becomes. Phase two, liquidity efficiency, why higher price equals better performance. Moving $1 billion at $1 per XRP requires 1 billion tokens, huge slippage, huge volatility, huge capital lockup. At $10,000 per XRP, same $1 billion requires only 100,000 tokens. At $50,000 per XRP, only 20,000 tokens. Result, near zero slippage, near zero volatility impact, near zero counterparty risk. The system literally gets stronger, faster, and more stable as price rises. This is the opposite of every other asset in history. Phase three, global demand versus fixed supply. Total XRP supply, 100 billion, hard capped, no inflation ever. Daily FX market, $7.5 trillion. Annual cross-border payments, $156 trillion and growing. Derivatives notional outstanding, estimated one quadrillion dollars. Even if XRP bridges just 1% of annual cross-border flows, that's $1.56 trillion per year. Assume 25 billion XRP in active circulation for settlement, the rest locked in escrow or long-term holders. 1.56 trillion divided by 25 billion equals $62,400 per XRP in bridged value annually. Velocity of three means $20,000 per XRP. Velocity of one means $60,000. This is not theory. This is what the network was engineered to do. Smash like if this just flipped your view on XRP. Phase four, the drop economy, institutional reality. Central banks, Payment providers and remittance corridors do not transact in whole XRP. They transact in drops. One drop equals one millionth of an XRP. At $50,000 per XRP, one drop equals five cents. Perfect for micropayments. 
At $100,000 per XRP, one drop equals 10 cents, still perfect. The ledger handles eight decimal places natively. No rounding errors, no dust issues. Compared to Bitcoin, eight decimal places. But at $1 million per coin, one sat equals one cent. But moving fractions of a sat is impossible. XRP was built for both coffee and countries. Phase five, scarcity meets necessity. Escrow releases 1 billion XRP per month maximum, 70% historically burned or relocked. Circulating supply grows slower than global payment volume. Global payment volume doubles roughly every seven to 10 years. XRP circulating supply grows less than 1% per year. Math says price must rise exponentially to keep the bridge functioning. Phase six, the tokenized gold parallel. One ounce of physical gold, 31.1 grams, trades at $2,600. But gold derivatives market, $12 trillion, 400 times physical. One ounce backs $400,000 in paper claims. XRP works the same. One token can back millions in tokenized settlement claims because of drops and velocity. The ledger doesn't care about retail price. It cares about value transferred per second. Phase seven, adoption checkpoints already passed. 450 plus financial institutions live on RippleNet. Over 100 central banks exploring XRP ledger sidechains for CBDC settlement. Clarity Act 2025 classified XRP as non-security for secondary markets. Institutional on-ramps now open globally. The flywheel is spinning. Hit subscribe, we track XRP institutional volume weekly. Phase eight, velocity and the final equation. Price equals total value transferred divided by circulating supply divided by velocity. Global cross-border flows growing 8% compounded annually. Velocity collapsing from 100 to 3 as institutions dominate. Circulating supply growing less than 1%. Plug in 2030 numbers, 250 trillion annual cross-border. Velocity 3, 30 billion circulating XRP. Result, $277,000 per XRP. That is the mathematical ceiling if adoption is total. Phase nine, the new monetary reality. When XRP becomes the neutral bridge asset for CBDCs, tokenized stocks, bonds, real estate, carbon credits, the price stops being set by retail order books. It becomes a function of global liquidity requirements. Retail traders become irrelevant. The token leaves exchanges and becomes infrastructure. So uh, as I mentioned this morning, this is our ninth swell. Uh, some of you remember, uh, there are a few people that were here for part of this, but uh, we, the concept of swell popped up in 2017 and it was the reaction to uh, Swift wouldn't let us attend Cybos. Some of you don't know, it's a, a true story. We couldn't get space, a, a booth at Cybos. And, so we decided, this is in Toronto, and we decided, you know, Cybos, the land of big banks, uh, we were the disruptors, literally. So uh, we went down the street, we hosted our own event, and admittedly, it was a little bit of a uh, warehouse, it wasn't nearly what we have today, but it was anchored by speakers like Ben Bernanke, and I think very quickly, Swift regretted their decision because they created more of a monster by pushing us out. Well, nine years later, the world looks profoundly different. Some of the biggest financial institutions in the world are here in this room with us, but it's not just them. We have the prime brokers, the application builders, the investment banks, the ETF issuers, as we just discussed, and everyone in between. Crypto and blockchain have moved from being taboo words to being part of the fabric of society. And let's be clear, let's be clear you are all part of this movement. In fact, you all are this movement. So thank you. <laughs> uh, 
I am beyond grateful to have witnessed this fundamental shift in how the financial layer of the internet is changing and evolving. The work is nowhere near done, but if the conversations over the last two days have proven anything, it's that although we have come a very long way, we are all just getting started. I've said this before, but it is truly, and I say this somewhat humorously, an amazing time to be alive. We are witnessing the rewiring of financial infrastructure. We are witnessing enabling things that were simply not possible before. It truly is, I believe, the economic opportunity of a lifetime to enable and catalyze this rewiring. I'm extremely proud that Ripple has been leading from the front, both with lawsuits, but in a lot of other ways as well. <laughs> So for over a decade, we've been leading with transparency, we've been leading with a compliance first posture, and we've been leading with the goal of championing, championing not just XRP, but the entire industry. I feel extremely lucky to have had the privilege of leading this company, and of course, an honor to be part of the larger XRP community. All right, so before I sign off and let everyone get snacks and drinks, one important public service announcement. I'm excited to share with you guys that our 10th swell, is gonna be a little bit different. As you guys know, the Swell has tended to cater towards the institutional audience. We've had separate events like Apex uh, that is catered to developers. But we are excited to expand Swell to include not just financial institutions and payment providers or asset managers, but bring in the developers, bring in the investors, bring in the researchers, bring in the academics, and, and the broader XRP community who we've hosted at other events this is gonna be one single Beacon event. It will be hosted by Ripple next year, back here in New York City, and we look forward to welcoming you all there next fall. Question, are you ready for XRP at $50,000? Drop yes or no below. This is Insider Tech. I do the research so you don't have to. Like and subscribe before the next liquidity revolution. Thanks for watching.